I've driven an awful lot of trucks in my time over the years. I thought I'd give you my top five favorite trucks that I've that I've preferred just because of the way they drove, the way they handled, the way they looked, and the way they worked, the way they did their job. That was always important to me. My first very favorite truck was a very common truck in the 70s. It was the International Cab Over Transtar 2. Now the one I drove was powered by a 318 Detroit and it had a 13 speed and it, I think it used about as much oil as it as it did fuel, diesel fuel. It was a little bit loud in the cab, but by God it did a good job. It was a short wheelbase tight turning truck. It was a lot of windshield in the cab over. The doghouse was right beside me, but uh, I really liked that truck. As, as cab overs go, it was fairly easy to work on. It did a good job. It was a good working truck. They were a popular truck. They sold thousands and thousands of those things. You saw them all over the place and they were good for good for guys that couldn't afford the fancier trucks like the Kenworths and the Peets, but back then International made a really good solid truck. So that's my that's on my top five list. So the International Transtar is probably number five on my top five list. The next truck that I that I had that I really enjoyed working in, by God it was a good hard working truck, was the R Model Mac. Now a lot of guys really liked the B model Mac and they, they were a nice truck but by God they were rough and uh, I preferred the R model partially because it rode better it was just just kind of a tighter truck the technology had progressed from the B model I uh, the one I drove was a five and a three with a 300 Mac engine and um, a Maxidine is what they called it but it was their version of the Jake brake and it was it was kind of a, a rough girl but you know, you could go it in 40 below weather and that thing would fire up in the mornings. Very reliable truck, very easy to work on. Never had any mechanical issues with it, really, and it, it did a great job. I pulled I pulled B trains in the Rockies with that truck. A little slow going up the hills, but <laughs> it never let me down. So uh, that's number four on my list was, was the R Model Mac. Number three on my list, and, and my all-time favorite truck, really, if I could if I could ever own one, is the uh, the 900A model Kenworth, the Long Hood Kenworth. I thought those were just a beautiful truck. I drove one for a while back in, oh, about 79, I guess it was, and just a beautiful truck, and I love that hood way out front. It, it, um, it was a nice truck, quiet truck. The interior was really nice, but the only beef I had with the thing was you needed 40 acres to do a U-turn with it. By God, it had a, had a huge turning radius. But, uh, oh, just a beautiful truck to look at. And really, it set the, the styling for the conventional trucks for that day. Double, double bunk flat top with a great big hood out front. Beautiful, beautiful truck. And if I could find one today in good shape, I, I'd own one. Because they, they, were, they were the nicest looking truck that ever came down the pike, in my opinion. Number two on my list, believe it or not, is another cab over, and it's another Kenworth as well. It's the double bunk cab over Kenworth, the K100. They were an amazing truck inside. They were just the size of a small condominium. They rode really well. They turned really well. They did everything really well. They were a great truck. The upholstery was nice. Not too bad to get at the motor, but a sharp looking truck. Boy, you really snapped your head when you saw one of those things coming down the highway at you. And they were a classic truck. You didn't really see a whole lot of them. They were fairly expensive, but uh, really a sharp looking truck. Number one on my list of all time favorite trucks has got to be the 379 Pete. I bought uh, the one that I have now, I bought it in 2003 and it came in, it was one of the first 2004s to come off the line. Again, a great working truck. I liked I like the 359s okay, but they seem to have quality control issues, and I was I was still running Kenworth back then at that time. I just thought Kenworth was a better built truck, but what I used to do is spec them identical and then price the Kenworth and price the Pete, and in 2003, the Pete came in for, for less money, so, and I'd had one of the one of the 93 Kenworths, and they'd, they'd still had the long hood, but the hood dropped, and I didn't like that, so... Uh, I like I like the 379 Pete. Better built than the 359 in my opinion. Good working truck, good looking truck, very popular truck. There's 
tens of thousands of those things still working today. Rode beautifully, good access to the motor, good quality control, easy to find parts for, lots of dealerships around, and just a nice clean looking truck all the way around. Probably the biggest favorite at truck shows still today, the 379. It's got 1.2 million miles on it. They've had to do minor maintenance on the engine, swapped out the injector cups, but really that's that's been it. Other than that, it's been a trouble-free truck. It's in great shape today. I still enjoy driving it. It still looks good. It doesn't look like an old truck. And uh, it's been a very good truck for me. Made me a lot of money and still looks good. So, there's my list of top five trucks. Now it's your turn. Let me know what your favorite truck was and why. I'm a little behind it. Give you guys a truck story, so I've got one for you. Back in, oh, the mid-80s, I guess it was, I worked for an air freight company. And one of the things we did was deliver jet engines for the airlines when they needed them. So I got the call one day. They had a, I was hauling out of Toronto, and they had a plane down in uh, San Francisco. The uh, the one engine on the plane in San Francisco was giving them grief. The, the thing was on the tarmac. It wasn't going anywhere. And, and the airline, Air Canada in Toronto, called the guy I worked for and said, hey, we need a jet engine out to San Francisco as fast as you can get it there. These things are, back then in the 80s, it was something like $100,000 an hour to have this plane sitting on the tarmac. And they were in a big rush. They said, oh, man, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. So the, the owner of the air freight company called me up and and uh, they were already loading a flatbed trailer with this aircraft engine and tarping it for me. I was on my way in from someplace else and they had a second driver standing by waiting for me and we were going to run team and I ran into Toronto. We pinned onto this engine. We checked it all down for tarps and chains and everything. It was good. We took off and man we had to go. We were running like rape apes and out of Toronto into San Francisco we made it in about 55 hours. Now that, that was a pretty good time. We sailed through. We didn't stop. We stopped only for, for fuel, and we ate while we were fueling the truck. And we just ran. Got into San Francisco in 55 hours. Thought, man, we're just a couple of heroes. We've done a good job here. Found the guy that we were supposed to talk to, and uh, we said, hey, hey, we're we're here out of Toronto. We got this aircraft engine for this Air Canada flight that's down. Where's the plane? We're here, man. And the guy pauses for a second and kind of thinks how he's going to approach it. He says, he says, oh, that plane left two days ago. I said, I said, what? He says, oh yeah, we just, we just have engines in stock here. We just picked one out of the rack and, and hung it on the wing and he's gone. He left two days ago. I thought, wow. Oh. So I, I phoned my boss. I, I said, what do you want to do now? He says, well, see if they want to keep the engine there and put it in their rack to replace the one that they've used. And this guy points over to the rack and here's a whole rack. Like you see boat storage, these are racks of jet engines. Just all lined up. They, they didn't need any more jet engines. Called the owner back and said, he doesn't want it. The owner goes, well, I talked to Air Canada and Toronto and the problem was that Air Canada and Montreal didn't talk to Toronto and that's why we sent you out there because the two offices didn't communicate. He goes, I guess you might as well just bring it back. <laughs> and that's what we did. We ended up taking a couple of days off in California to get ours back and take a break because we'd run so hard going out there. But we just took the same engine, didn't even untarp it or unchain it or anything. Just took the same engine, took it all the way back to Toronto. and. The air freight company made a fortune on the deal, and I did pretty well myself, just running the same motor back and forth. Talk about stupidity, but it was it was a good run anyway. Take care, drivers. Keep the rubber side down. Good talking to you, and we'll see you on the backhaul.